हेलो एवरीबॉडी दिस इज डॉक्टर विशाल त्रिवेदी फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बायो साइंसेज एंड बायो इंजीनियरिंग आई गुवाहाटी एंड व्हाट वी वर डिस्कसिंग वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द हॉरिजॉन्टल जेल इलेक्ट्रोफोरेसिस इन आवर प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी वर वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट द एक्सपेरिमेंटल कंडीशंस एंड द हाउ टू परफॉर्म द जेल इलेक्ट्रोफोरेसिस वी हैव आल्सो शोन यू अ स्मॉल डेमो क्लिप्स हाउ टू डू इट इन द लैब and i hope that these are the these uh, these these two things could have been explained you the uh, horizontal gel electrophoresis in a more detail and you will be able to perform the agarose gel electrophoresis in your own laboratory so let's move on to discuss the different variants of the uh, gel electrophoresis which you can do uh, or which are been available so there are there are there are the sds page which is actually a denaturating page so as you know that the electrophoretic mobility is is actually been governed by the charge by mass ratio so if i if i keep the charge uh, charge by mass ratio so if i keep the charge constant uh, then the electrophoretic mobility is going to be inversely proportional to the mass and that is what the condition for sds page so if i if i add the sds into the uh, into the gel electrophoresis uh, the sds is going to bind to the protein molecules and as a result it is actually going to give the negative charge and since the charge is imparted by the sds is going to be the uh going to be uniform uh, for every protein the charge component is going uh, charge component uh, uh, is going to be uh, nullified and as a result the electrophoretic mobility is going to be inversely proportional to the mass in addition to that since the sds is a detergent it also destroys the three dimensional structures of that particular protein and if suppose the protein is present in the oligomeric status which means if the protein is present in a dimer trimer tetramer or any other higher molecular higher uh, uh, oligomeric status those higher oligomers are also going to be denatured with the help of the sds so in the sds what you will happen is that the proteins are going to be run as the uh, monomer or the uh, monomer and since they are actually going to have the equal charges they are also going to be resolved as per the inversely relationship to the their molecular weight which means the high molecular weight proteins are going to run slower and the lower molecular weight proteins are going, going to run faster apart from the sds page you also can have the native page native page means where you are not going to have the sds into the reactions or you also not going to have the any kind of denaturating agents such as the beta mercapto ethanol uh, so sds page is discussed in the previous lecture and is using anionic detergent sodium dodecyl sulfate and beta mercapto ethanol to give the equal charges to all the protein and breaks the disulfide linkages as a result the 3d structure of the protein is destroyed and it migrate as per their subunit molecular weight whereas in the native page the sample is prepared in the loading dye does not contain the detergent or the denaturating agent and as a result the sample runs on the basis of the charge by mass so this relationship what you see is the electrophoretic mobility is directly proportional to the charge and inversely proportional to the mass or in general the electrophoretic mobility is going to be affected by the charge by mass ratio is actually the condition for the native page so in the native page the proteins are going to maintain the three dimensional structures they are also going to maintain their intrinsic charge which means if the protein is positively charged it is going to remain as positively charged if it is negatively charged it is going to remain as negatively charged and in native page the three dimensional conformation as well as the activity of the protein remains unaffected so the native protein and the native page is always been used to ask the questions whether the protein is 
a monomeric protein or the oligomeric protein and so on because if you run the same protein onto the SDS page and if you run the same protein onto the native page and if you calculate their electrophoretic mobility and if you use that information you can be able to answer the questions of the oligomeric status of the particular protein because the electrophoretic mobility in the SDS is going to be as per the molecular weight whereas the electrophoretic mobility in the native page is going to be as per the charge by mass ratio because if the protein is dimeric the mass is going to be of corresponding to the dimer whereas in the SDS page it is going to be monomeric. So, so the combination of the SDS page and the native page is, there is going to give you the answer about the oligomeric status of the protein number one. Number two with the help of the native page you can be able to because the native page is going to maintain the three dimensional conformations it is also uh, going to maintain the activity of the protein. So, you can be able to do the functional activities you can be able to do lot of activity assays when you, the protein is present in the gel and you can answer you can ask you can resolve many questions related to the biochemical activity of that particular enzyme or biochemical activity of that particular protein. Number 3 the native proteins because the native page is also going to allow you the three dimensional conformations the native page can be used even to for the uh, studying the interaction between the two proteins. For example, if protein A and protein B is there, the protein A and B if they interact with each other their, their res resultant charge resultant molecular mass is going to be very high. So, that is how you can be able to ask that particular questions. If you load protein A, protein B and protein AB complex uh, then the electrophoretic mobility is going to be different for the complex. Apart from that if you see what the protein size and if you see the what kind of gel electrophoresis or what kind of the gel you have to uh, use for seeing the better resolution and separation what you see is that if you have a very very small molecular weight for example the 4 to 40 kda protein then you can be able to use the 20 percent gel electrophoresis which means you have a third if you have prepared a 30 percent acrylamide solution which actually contains 1 percent cross linking agent the bis acrylamide then from there you can be able to use the 20 percent gel if you have if you are working in a with the proteins which are in the range of 4 to 40 kda but if you are working in the range of 12 to 45 kda you can use 15 percent if you go to 10 to 70 you can use the 12.5 if you use 15 to 100 you can use 10 percent and if you are working in the range of 25 to 200 you can be able to use the 8 percent which means as the molecular weight is increasing you are actually decreasing the acrylamide because I think you if you remember I have shown you that when the polyacrylamide is when the acrylamide is getting cross linked by the bis acrylamide and that actually creates a pore within the because the fibers are getting connected by the bis acrylamide it actually creates a pore or the mesh and from that mesh the molecule has to pass through. So, if you take the very high concentrated acrylamide the high molecular weight proteins are not going to enter. So, for the re practical references point of view these values are being utilized so that is by simply by people have done the different types of experiment and that is how they come up with this value. But the condition comes when you have to resolve a protein of 500 kda for example or even 2000 kda protein for example if you have such a large proteins or if you have the multimeric protein complexes how you are going to resolve that because if you drop this concentration to suppose 5 percent okay or even to like 3 percent this lower concentration of the acrylamide is so less that it will not going to give you the gel like structures it actually going to make the it, it is not actually enough to give you a gel which can be manipulated in a very very simple way. So, to solve this problem where you have a very large protein and protein complexes the people have 
de de developed the new gel electrophoresis technique where they are using the multiple gels and that is how they are being able to utilize and resolve the these high molecular weight proteins. Apart from that suppose you have the protein of lower to this concentration for example, if you have the amino acids which you are interested to resolve onto the acrylamide gel then you cannot go beyond the 20 percent because that is the maximum what you can prepare from the 30 percent acrylamide solutions. But what you can see is that the 30 percent acrylamide solution has only the 1 percent base acrylamide. So, if you have to if you have a proteins of a very very small size then what you can do is you can still be able to run the 20 percent gel, but you can increase the percentage of the bisaclamide and these kind of the gel are called as the highly cross linked cross linked gels. Okay. So, if you have a very very small molecular weight you can use the highly cross linked gels where you can actually use the 2 percent or 3 percent bisaclamide. Whereas, if you have a very very high molecular weight protein then you can you have to use a combination of different gels which we are going to discuss in a subsequent slide. So, if you have a protein of 500 to 2000 kDa you can be able to use a agarose acrylamide composite gels where you are actually going to use the agarose for providing the supporting media or supporting stuff supporting media whereas, the acrylamide is also going to use for resolving the sample. So, what you have done you have used the two different gels and utilize their properties. So, the agarose is being used for providing the solid support so that you will be able to manipulate this, these gels because if you use the 3 percent or 4 percent acrylamide gels they will be very flimsy and they will not be able to so the user so you cannot be able to handle them because before you stain them with the uh, uh, bullion blue they will get broken down into the pieces. So, to avoid that and to provide the strength to the system what you do is you just simply add the small quantity of agarose and that actually is going to give you a strength so that it actually helps in providing the overall uh, so overall uh, strength so that it actually post operations are going to be easy whereas the acrylamide is still be the material which actually be going to be used for resolving so how to prepare these gels what you have to do is you have to first prepare the uh, complete uh, acrylamide solutions then what you do is you add the 1 percent agarose powder and then you boil this as we are actually did discuss in the in the when we were discussing about the horizontal gel electrophoresis. Now, you boil and let the acrylamide to be get dissolved the only thing is that you should not add the timid and you should not add the APS at this step. So, you prepare the complete acrylamide solution which means you can take the acrylamide you can add the SDS you can add the trace you can add everything and then you add the 1 percent agarose uh, powder as per the calculation of that particular volume you boil it so that the agarose get melted and then when this solution get uh, cooled down to 40 to 50 degree then what you do is you take the solutions and pour it into the glass slides which you are using for the vertical gel electrophoresis and let this to be resolved and give you the resolving gel. Okay. So, you are going to prepare a resolving gel where the acrylamide percentage is going to be 3 to 4 percent and the agarose is going to be 1 percent and then what you do is you again cast the stacking gel and then you put your comb and prepare the uh, wells and then you can load the protein samples and resolve as as we discussed when we were discussing about the vertical gel electrophoresis and that actually is going to give you uh, the uh, uh, options to resolve the proteins of 500 to 2000 kilodalton uh, molecular weight. 
uh, if you require you can run the SDS page or if you require if you require you can run the native pages and that actually is going to be good enough to resolve the uh, single protein of such high molecular weight or the multi malic protein complexes. Uh, apart from that, we also have the urea page. So, in this method, the insoluble protein is dissolved in urea and the sample separates based on the charge by the mass ratio. So, urea page is similar to a native page except that it is actually going to uh, destroy the three dimensional uh, structures because the urea is a denaturant. So, it is actually going to destroy the three dimensional structure. If you use a gradient urea page, you can be able to uh, study the folding and unfolding kinetics of the study. So, what you have to do when you are doing a urea a gradient urea page is that you have to prepare a vertical gel where you are going to have a urea from 0 to 8 molar in different lanes. For example, you have going to have a lane of 0 lane then you are going to have a lane for 1, then you are going to have a lane for 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 8. And these are going to be the gradient in a horizontal direction. So, the first question comes is how to prepare this kind of gradient urea page. So, if because if you remember or you are always pouring from the top and it is this liquid is getting filled into this chamber like this. So, because of that you cannot be able to generate a gradient in this direction. So, for this purpose what you have to do is you have to rotate this cassette in this direction first. Okay. So, you can imagine that we, we have just rotated this cassette by the 90 degree and now you started filling from this side. Okay. So, first you fill this one, then you fill this one, then you fill this one, then you fill this one. So, when you rotate you have to block from the top as well and then you start pouring from the top and first you fill this one, this one, this one, this one, this one like that. Okay. So, then once you are done with the casting of all the uh, up to the end, then you can rotate it back again and then you can start pouring the stacking gel and you can be able to cast the you can put the comb and you can cast the different wells and then you just load the proteins which are already been incubated with the different amount of urea and as a result what will what you are going to see in the observation you are going to see like for example you have a 0 molar 3 molar 6 molar and 8 molar so in the 0 molar you are going to see a single band which is actually going to be corresponding to the tetramer. So, I assume that we are resolving a tetrameric proteins. Now, once it reaches to the 3, your tetramer concentration of the tetramer is going to be broken down and then you are actually going to see some amount of trimer, some amount of dimer and some amount of monomer which, which means this is actually going to be trimer, this is going to be dimer and this is going to be monomer. If you go further up then you your band your concentration of the tetramer is going to be reduced whereas the all other proteins are going to be increased. But once you reach to the 8 molar all these will get reached to the monomeric protein. So, all will get broken down into the monomer. So, if you can actually be able to follow this kind of study and if you do this kind of experiments that actually will get going to tell you the stability of these individual uh, uh, oligomers towards the uh, towards the urea. So, it will actually tell you that which monomer is going to be broken down and at what step the protein is losing its three dimensional structures and at what step it is actually losing its interaction with the neighbors. So, that the tetrameric protein is getting converted into trimeric and dimeric and monomeric and ultimately everything will get converted into the uh, monomeric. So, at this stage all your protein got unfolded whereas, at this stage all your protein is under the folding stage. So, if by doing this you can be able to study the different intermediates what the protein is going to go through to uh, becomes completely folded protein to completely unfolded proteins. 
Now let us move on to the next topic and that is the two dimensional gel electrophoresis because so far we were discussing only the gel electrophoresis, but the gel electrophoresis is always utilizing the one uh, property either it is the charge or the mass or the combination of the charge by mass, but it was not utilizing the two property to resolve the sample. So, so if you pro, if you utilize the two properties and to resolve the samples, then it is called as the two dimensional gel electrophoresis. So, the complex biological samples are efficiently resolved in 2D gel electrophoresis. It involves the combination of charge and the molecular weight to provide the much greater separation in comparison to the use of the individual property, which means you are first going to resolve the molecule based on the charge and then you are also going to resolve them as per the molecular weight. So, because of that it is actually going to give you the better separation. The, the two dimensional gel electrophoresis is a combination of isoelectric focusing followed by the SDS page in a in a perpendicular directions. The isoelectric foc isoelectric points separates the samples based on their isoelectric pH. It is indirectly related to the charge which is present on the proteins whereas the SDS page separates the molecule based on the size which is indirectly related to the molecular weight. So, what you can see is suppose you have a complex protein mixture and if you take this protein mixture the in the first dimension what you can do is you can load it onto the isoelectric focusing strips and that actually is going to resolve these molecules based on the isoelectric point. Then what you can do is you can just rotate to the 90 degree and run it as per the molecular weight. So, now in this direction it is been resolved as per the pi and in this direction it is going to be resolved as per the molecular weight and because of these combinations you are going to see the individual parts of which where the two in two proteins of the similar properties are going to be resolved because the two proteins which are actually having the same molecular weight may not have the same isoelectric point. So, first they will be get separated based on the isoelectric point and then they will be get separated based on the molecular weight. So, even if the two proteins and the same is true for the isoelectric point. So, if the two proteins are of identical isoelectric point, but they have the different molecular weight then also it is actually going to give you the two spots. You can imagine if I could in resolve the same sample either using the isoelectric point or to the molecular weight then the, the samples will not get resolved properly or it will not get resolved completely. In general the analysis of complex bacterial lysate or tissue extract can produce even two, 1000 to 2500 well separated spots with a sensitivity detection tool and image analysis software individual of these spots can be identified under the different conditions. So, the 2D gel electrophoresis is very very popular in terms of looking for the changes in the pattern of the proteins when you are treating a particular organism or bacteria with something which is actually changing the, uh, the proteome of that particular uh, organisms. And because these changes are very very subtle and these changes are very very difficult to map simply by using the one property either the isoelectric point or to the molecular weight that is why people are using the two dimensional gel electrophoresis to resolve them and in general you are going to produce 1000 to 2500 spots to only and that actually is going to give you the enough separations to see each and every spot. And once you got these spots you can be able to extract the protein from those spots and you can be able to uh, and identify those spots and you can be able to identify the proteins. How to perform the two dimensional electrophoresis? Uh, the material what you required for the two dimensional gel electrophoresis you required the isoelectric focusing strips. These isoelectric focusing strips are nothing but the strips of the cellulose where you have the ampholytes are arranged onto the strips of different charges. So, these ampholytes are nothing but the uh, ampho amphoteric molecules and the uh, these strips are 
coated with these molecules. So, this region is actually going to be corresponding to a particular type of PI. So, because of that when the proteins are going to run and when they reach to their isoelectric point, they will get immobilized to that particular region and because of that it, they will get separated based on the their isoelectric point. Then you need a reagent for the SDS page and then you also require the reagent because you want to do a sensitive detection. So, you can also require the reagent for the silver staining. Then you require the trypsin because once you got these spars, you have to trypsinize them so that the proteins are going to produce the peptides and then these peptides can be analyzed in a mass spectrometry to know what is the mass of these peptides and then you will be able to identify that particular protein. This is has the multiple steps. For example, in the step 1 you are going to do the protein extractions. In the protein extraction the tissue or the cell will frozen into and will make a fine powder. Then this fine powder is mixed with the chilled 10% uh, TCA in acetone with 10 in 1% DTT. The tissue suspension was incubated for 1 hour at 20 degree and the mixture is centrifuged at 35,000 G for 15 minutes at 4 degree. Uh, you can discard the supernatant and carefully dissolve the pellet into the ice and acetone containing 1% DTT, incubate the suspension and by going through this procedure ultimately what you are going to get, you are going to get, you are going to get the material and before you load this uh, uh, material into the isoelectric focusing strip, you have to estimate the protein with the help of the either Lowry or the Bradford method. So, that it should not be that you load very high quantity of the protein or very less quantity of protein because if you load very high quantity of protein, then the protein uh, is going to overlap with each other and the separation is going to be compromised. If you load very little, then you are may miss some of the protein which was present in the sample, but since the level was so low, it may not be it, it, may, it may not be up to the level of detections. Then the step 2, you are going to do the first dimensions. So, the IPG strips in this case we have I am taking an example of pH 3 to 10. So, IPG strips as I said you know are actually having the empholites which are coated and you can have a IC, IPG strip of any range like 2 to 5, 2 to 10, 3 to 10 is, is rehydrated overnight with 350 microliter of rehydration buffers and uh, once it get rehydrated you can load the uh, IPG strip with 1000 microgram protein in a resoiling tray at room temperature. The focused strips were equilibrated twice first equilibration in a 50 millimolar tray sphere containing this and the second was performed in a solution containing 4 percent iodostamide instead of DTT. So, you are going to do the two focusing rounds in one of them it is going to have the DTT the other one you are going to have the iodostamide. Once the isoelectric focusing was conducted at 20 degree for running condition first hour at 500 volts followed by the 1000 volt for 2 hours and finally, the 16 hours at 3000 volts. So, when you run this for the 16 hours at 3000 volt, the proteins are going to migrate throughout this isoelectric focusing strip and then it will get immobilized to its individual uh, spots. The IPG strips will be taken out from the apparatus and the second dimension separation will be performed in the SDS page in a vertical slab of the acclamide. Now, once you are done with the first dimensions, then what you are going to have is you are going to have the IPG strips ok. And then what you have to do is you take the IPG strips and put it into the uh, chlamide solution. So, what you are going to do? You are going to first cast the resolving gels ok, but you do not need to cast the stacking gels. And so, first you cast the resolving gel and you put the your strip ok and then you actually pour the stacking gel and because of that you are actually going to seal the differences between the uh, IPG strip as well as the SDS page and then it becomes a continuous one gel and then you are going to perform the uh, second dimension SDS page as we discussed for when we were discussing about the vertical gel electrophoresis. Uh, the proteins which are actually going to be migrated like this 
are now going to run in these directions. Okay? This means all this protein is going to be concentrate and that is how you are actually going to get a spot from this protein. So, you might have multiple proteins which are being present in this particular spots and that is why it is you are going to see the multiple spots from a single IPG strip uh, focusing area which means at a PI of 3.1 you might have 5 proteins and all these 5 proteins may have a multi different molecular weights and that is why you are going to see the proteins of the uh, spots of the different positions and the same will be true for multiple places. Once you got these spots, you can be able to uh, you know uh, analyze the spot pattern on the uh, on the second dimension gel and you can be able to compare it with the uh, with the with the untreated samples or the different treatment samples and that is how it actually going to tell you that what are the spots are differentially being expressed which means these are the spots which are additionally being present and that is the spots you can be able to extract out from the gel and that you can be able to use uh, the uh, downstream uh, uh, two dimensional gel electrophoresis approaches and with like for example, you can do the tripsonizations and then you do the multi mass and all that and you can be able to identify the proteins. There are couple of uh, good MOOC courses are available from the IIT Bombay. If you are interested to uh, study the uh, two dimensional gel electrophoresis as well as the proteomics. So, if you are interested you can actually go to the um, uh, IIT Bombay's and uh, uh, MOOC courses and you can study that in more in details. So, here we are not going to discuss each and every those steps. I am just trying to tell you that these are the actually uh, options which are available for you to utilize the gel electrophoresis to answer many many critical questions. So, in typical what you have what we have done or what we have discussed so far that you are first going to take the cell or the tissue you are going to prepare the extract the first you are going to run this extract onto the IPG strips and that will be going to resolve them as in the form of the bands onto the these strips and then what you are going to do is you are going to load this strip onto the SDS page. So, each strip each spot is or each band is now going to be resolved into the individual spots and that is how you are going to get the 1000 to 2500 different spots and these spots can be cut out from the gel and can be done for the downstream applications like the uh, Proteus treatment and the mass spectrometry. Now, uh, we have discussed about the native page, we have discussed about the SDS page, we have discussed about the agarose and acrylamide gels and we have also discussed about the two dimensional gel electrophoresis. What is the limitation of the native page is that it always uh, govern by the intrinsic charge of the particular protein which means if the protein is negatively charged it is actually going to run as per the negative charge but you know that the electrophoresis apparatus has a negative uh, uh, electrode onto the top and the positive electrode at the bottom. But what will be the condition if you have a mixture where you are going to have the positively charged as well as the negatively charged proteins. In those kind of complex mixture you will not be able to utilize the native page because you either the positively charged protein will run or the negatively charged protein runs irrespective of whether so, uh, so if, if you have a complex mixture you have where you have the positively charged or the negatively charged proteins you have to run the horizontal page. So, horizontal page is similar to the agarose gel, but you are using the acrylamide instead of the agarose. So, the horizontal gel electrophoresis in this apparatus the complex biological sample is resolved as per their charge and move to the counter charge electrode which means the positive will move towards the negative and the negative will move towards the positive. The sample loaded in the middle of the gel get resolved based on their mass by charge ratio. 
the gel cassette designed to prepare agarose gel is not appropriate to cast the polychloride gel due to the exposure of gel with the environmental oxygen so the gel cassette what we use for the agarose gel electrophoresis is not good enough to cast the polyacrylamide gels because it is been opened from the top so because of that it is actually going to get the direct entry of oxygen and you know that the oxygen is a inhibitor of the acrylamide polymerization so if the oxygen is present the polyacrylamide is not going to get polymerized to give you the page so because of that you require a specialized native page apparatus which actually can resolve the sample based on the charge by mass ratio the horizontal native page separates the protein mixture with a high resolution and the protein migration is corresponding well with the mass by charge ratio so first discuss about the instrumentation part so the design of the gel cassettes the gel cassette consists of three plates the one big plate which is the plate number 1 and the two small plates which are number 2 and 3 a 2 mm thick glass slide is stick to the large plate to give the inbuilt spacer which means you are actually going to put the 2 mm thick glass slide on to the side so and that actually is going to give you the spacer the gel cassette is sealed with a thick foam on to the both side okay on the both side you have a very thick foam which is actually going to used for the sealing of this particular apparatus which is impregnated with agarose to avoid the leakage then the gel cassette is assembled with the help of a binder clip with a 1 mm 1 cm gap to place the comb which means you have this main plate you are you have a comb you have a foam on this side you have a foam on this side you have a spacer on both the sides and then what you going to do is you are going to place the number 2 you are going to place the number 3 like this and then you are going to put the clips on both the sides so that this whole apparatus is going to be assembled as one and then you are going to start casting the polyacrylamide gels the casting of the horizontal native acrylamide gels the gel cassette is assembled by the binder clips to keep 1 cm gap between the between them to place the combs the leakage of the cassette was checked by the water before pouring the acrylamide solutions so what you have is you have a main plate where you are going to have the foam at the bottom and the top so first you what you do is you are so this is the plate number 1 so first what you do is put the plate number 2 okay put the clips on both the sides and then you pour the liquid okay and once the uh, it is get resolved and it get polymerized then you have to rotate this okay and then you put the number 3 on this side and you bring it down okay and then pour it again so you can imagine that this is like this if you are going to see for this so number 2 will go on top and number 3 will come at the bottom and that's how you going to pour into this so actually the casting is going to be a two step event first you cast for the number 2 then you cast for the number 3 and then the middle portion is going to be empty and the thin layer of water equilibrated butanol is overlaid on top of the resolving gel same procedure is adapted to cast the resolving gel on the other side of the glass plate gel cassette is placed horizontally and stacking gel is poured and a comb is placed to cast the wells which means once this all thing are done then you take the plate like this okay so this side is casted this side uh, this side is casted then you pour the stacking gel in between and put a comb so if you put the comb the well is going to be prepared sim just like as it was prepared for the dna now running of the gel the sample preparations the protein samples are mixed with the 5x loading dye containing 40% sucrose 10% bromophenol blue and 10% methylene blue bromophenol blue is a an ionic dye and used to monitor the mobility of the protein on the anodic side whereas the mb is a cationic dye to track the movement of the other side the electrophoresis once you 
put that once the stacking gel is polymerized, the comb, binder clips and foam pads are removed and wells are washed with water or 1x the native glycine running buffer. The gel cassette is placed in the horizontal direction in the electrode chamber. The chamber is filled with the chilled 1x native trace glycine running buffer to the level just enough to touch to the glass plate which means if you have this and you have kept the glass plate like this okay so this side you have a chamber this side you have a chamber you connect these with a uh, something so that it actually take up the buffer but it is not a continuous mode of, of running it is going to be discontinuous mode so that the current goes through the gel from one cham buffer chamber to the next buffer chamber. So, the principle remains the same except that now we are doing the electrophoresis in the horizontal directions. Load the samples up to the 20 microliter and electrophoresis is performed with a constant 100 volts in a cold room because the, the electrophoresis is going to be for 18 to 20 hours. So, it has to be in a cold room so that the sample does not get denatured and destroyed. Uh, then once you are done with that you do the staining and de-staining after the electrophoresis is over the gel is removed from the cassette with the help of a scalpel and the stain with the commassive billion blue the whole process of a staining and de-staining of the gel complete in less than 3 hours and what you can see is that I have loaded a bacterial lysate and what you can see is that the positively charged proteins are going towards the negative electrodes and the negatively charged proteins are migrating towards the positive electrodes and that is how you can be able and all both of these samples are native in native so that is how you can be able to resolve and you can be able to visualize the pattern of the positive as well as the negative protein present in the same uh, mixture using the, the horizontal gel electrophoresis. What are the advantage of this gel electrophoresis? The horizontal gel electrophoresis can be used in conjugation of SDS page to separate and analyze the complex biological samples. It is user friendly and no specialized equipment is required. The native page, native preparative gel is purified in bulk quantity, the protein in the bulk quantity for the antibody development as well as for the activity assay. Moreover, this design does not require any specialized fabrication in allow user to cast the stacking and resolving gel together. Which means the horizontal page is giving you the many advantages where you can actually utilize them to resolve the proteins of the positively as well as negatively charged which are present in the sample together. Number two, because it is actually resolving the sample based on the charge by mass ratio you can be able to utilize this gel in conjugation with the SDS page and that actually will allow you to resolve the very very complex biological samples. And uh, there are other advantage that it is user friendly compared to the other tedious uh, horizontal page apprentices are available. And uh, so with this we would like to conclude our lecture here. In our subsequent lecture, we are actually going to discuss the experiments as well as the research problems what are being related to the electrophoresis and we are also going to discuss the some more staining techniques which are also available in the uh, which, which are also being used in the electrophoresis. So, with this I would like to conclude my lecture here. In a subsequent lecture, we will going to discuss some more topics related to the electrophoresis. Thank you.